Hello everybody, this is the LEGO Animation Iceberg, featuring various topics relating to the brick filming community. From the birth of LEGO Animation in 1973, to the formation of online brick filming communities in the 2000s, to today, there is a wealth of films, lore, and crazy characters to be found. The iceberg is split up into seven tiers, with the entries at the top being the most mainstream and well-known, and those at the bottom being the most obscure, and perhaps even the darkest tales from brick filming history. Since Bricks in Motion and its predecessor BrickFilms.com were the biggest brick filming community since 2000, there will be a slight skew in the variety of stories. However, we've done our best to compile topics from all across the internet as best we can. The brick filming community is vast, and we're excited to tell some of the most fun and most weird stories that it has to offer and each tier will be narrated by a different brick filmer, including some special guests. Now, let's get started. Alright, this is Rudy. We're starting out tier 1, which is the first tier, and the first item is Michael Hickox, who I used to watch when I was a kid. Uh, he's a popular brick filmer known for his typically silent, family-friendly animations such as Lego Shopping, Lego School, Lego Bath Time, and uh, Lego Pizza Deliveries 1 through 8. The first brick film he ever uploaded was in 2007 with the early YouTube classic Lego Mario, who could forget? Uh, his recreations of other video games recreated in Lego, like Donkey Kong and Galaga, would gain him viral notoriety back when videos going viral didn't happen every day. This is 2007, after all. He then shifted towards the aforementioned Slice of Life videos, where, you know, dog gets dirty, you gotta give the dog a bath. Uh, he continued to gain tens of thousands to tens of millions of views per video, and up until recently, he was the brick filmer with the most amount of subscribers on YouTube, with almost 1.5 million and over 1 billion total video views since 2009. Now that's impressive. And we're gonna move on to LEGO Batman Shark Attack. LEGO Batman Shark Attack is a brick film by a channel called Stop Motion King featuring Batman and Barbara Gordon heading to the beach. On the surface, it may not seem like much, but it is the most viewed brick film on YouTube of all time, with over 419 million views. While seemingly harmless, the channel Stop Motion King seems to be essentially a content farm that capitalizes on other brick films by recreating them almost verbatim? What? In the case of LEGO Batman Shark Attack, it's nearly the exact same video as Lego Shark Attack by FK Films, which has a still impressive 69 million views. Oh my god. Uh, but it is slightly depressing that the most viewed brick film on YouTube is a video, <laughs> is a ripoff made by a soulless content machine. Dude, this is the second item on this list, and we're already pulling out the heavy punches. I love it. It features. Uh, this lovely bit uh, So yeah, the certified YouTube kids moment my friend. All right, we're gonna move on to something a little tamer uh, A little tamer in comparison the Lego movie. I gotta say I love the Lego movie It's a full-length computer animation uh, in 2014 It was it was released directed by a man named Phil Lord and another man Hopefully they're friends uh, Christopher Miller uh, because it's made with CG and not stop-motion whether Lego movie is considered a brick film or not is disputed uh, but I personally do not care. Uh, the animation style was intentionally made to look like stop motion, as opposed to the free bending motion of characters in previous LEGO CGI materials like Clutch Powers. It had an all star cast featuring Chris Pratt, Elizabeth Banks, uh, Will Ferrell, Morgan Freeman, Liam Neeson, Charlie Day, and Nick Offerman, and more. While initially met with skepticism by some in the brick film community, uh, I wasn't one of them. Guys, I like this film day one. Once the film came out, it was loved by both brick filmers and general audiences alike. I actually saw it opening night, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta admit, I was, uh, I believe, in middle school when it came out. It grossed 468 million and went off to spawn a sequel and two spin-off films. Hold your horses, you know, we'll get there when we get there. It's a big iceberg, we're, we're at the top, you know, what do you expect? And starting off here, we got a forest fire, forest fire 101 who's another popular and influential brick filmer, primarily known in the brick filming community for his Lego Batman series in the late 2000s and early 2010s, and more recently, his action brick films ranging from Star Wars, 
Captain America, Suicide Squad, etc. His Brick films are known for their irreverent humor and often violent action sequences that have more impressive animation and cinematography than the average Brick film. He has worked directly with the Lego Group, Warner Brothers, and Epic Rap, epic rap Battles of History. Why, are, why is Epic Rap Battles of History on the same, like, level as Warner Brothers and like okay never mind and has collaborated with other popular brick filmers and if you've never seen any of his brick films you have definitely seen bum, 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 ba -dum, ba -dum. a duck walked up to a lemonade stand and he said to the man run in the stand hey bum, bum, bum. got any grapes Oh, here we go. Battle of the Brick, built for combat. Battle of the Brick is a 30-minute Halo Brick film. You've probably seen it uh, because it's got 83 million views at the time that this video comes out. The film was made by a man named Alex Cobbs, aka Coobers, whose output comprises a whole plethora of Brick films based on popular video games, many of which were made for and posted to the Machinima channel, which have not been largely publicly available since that channel folded and yeeted itself off the internet. CGI LEGO promotional films, alright, yeah, now we're getting somewhere spicy. While the LEGO group has leaned more so on stop motion animated promotional videos for its products in recent years, it wasn't always like that. A lot of the late 90s and early 2000s, there were these weird, kind of creepy CG animated promo films and commercials, uh, you know, long before the LEGO movie figured out how to make it look good. I mean, I'm not saying these films all look bad, but I mean, okay, that one, okay, mmm, all right, ooh, okay, no, 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 okay, I'm out of here, I'm out of here, I'm getting out of here, nope, nope, no, no, no. Ed Bound. Ed Bound is a brick filmer known for his movie in X Minutes brick film series and other movie parodies. He does recaps of the Marvel Cinematic Universe movies that are often better than the films themselves and makes some awesome claymation videos as well. Throughout 2021, he challenged himself to release a video every Monday throughout the year and he mostly achieved that, whilst also occasionally live streaming his animation progress on Twitch and interacting with his viewers. He's also worked for Stupid Buddy Studios on shows such as Ultra City Smiths. Brotherhood Workshop Run by Kevin Ulrich, Brotherhood Workshop is mainly known for their brick film set in Middle Earth, but they also extend to Jurassic World, Harry Potter, and more. The staples of Brotherhood Workshop films are real-world pieces of nature integrated to the set, and fast-paced 24 frames per second animation that makes it feel very kinetic. They're the main brick film collaborator for the LEGO Group, so if you've seen a brick film put out by the LEGO Group that promote their IP branded themes in the past five years, it is most likely made by Brotherhood Workshop. Also, James Corden. Look at this! This is... <laughs> the Magic Portal. This is the most widely known early brick film, created in 1989 by fellow Australian animator Lindsay Flea. It follows a team of astronauts as they find a portal that takes them to the world outside of the animation set. It's often misattributed as the first brick film ever, however there were plenty beforehand even going back to 1973. When Flea tried to submit the magic portal to film festivals, it led to a legal battle with LEGO which was ultimately dropped, but too late to be accepted to festivals that year. The magic portal actually did have a brief reference in the LEGO movie though. Dynamic Duos Dynamic Duos is a trend in brick filming that features two friends with typically contrasting personalities living in an apartment and they go on wacky adventures. There were early duos like Biff and Mario and Rick and Steve, we'll revisit those later, but the Dynamic Duo trend really started with Steve and Dave by Nate Burr aka Blunty. The two guys in an apartment aspect of it really solidified with more well-known series such as Mike and Jeff, Kevin and Mr. Tater, Alex and Derek, Ben and Andy, and Benny and Lee. In the 2010s, the occasional dynamic duo would pop up, but never had the relevance that it had in the 2000s. Paganimation and the Lego Animation Book 
David Pagano is the man behind Paganimation, another one of the LEGO Group's frequent collaborators. He rose to internet prominence in 2007 with Little Guys, a very impressive fake commercial featuring brick-built humans rather than minifigures. He started working with the LEGO Group in 2008 with Go Miniman Go, and went on to make several series for LEGO, such as the Space Police line, and also did videos for the LEGO Club show. In 2016, he collaborated with fellow brick filmer David Pickett to create the LEGO Animation Book, a tutorial book to get new people started in the world of brick filming, which is still available for purchase. Panzer Hat Panzer Hat is, or perhaps was, a brick filmer who made a name for himself making bizarre comedy brick films that feature unusually large and detailed sets. His films feature the pretty rare combo of tight writing, really solid animation, and great camera work and set design that make his work immediately stand out from a lot of his contemporaries. Some standouts include the Lego Sci-Fi Train movie, Lego House Flipping, and Lego McDonald's But You Broke. That last film is an interesting case as it marked a bit of a shift in his style and presentation. With the introduction of one strangely furry smartass hippo, you more broke than Humpty Dumpty, Pandas Hat's content started to feature both a recurring cast of characters who would reappear across multiple videos, as well as more non-LEGO elements such as action figures, assorted toys, and diorama sets. The humour shifted away from the more general humour of his LEGO work to a more edgy and, let's say, extremely online style of humour. What? Cringe! No, I'm totally based and red-pilled! Also, don't drink the tap water. The government puts female hormones in the water supply. This style skyrocketed his channel to new heights, bringing him from just over 100,000 subscribers at the start of 2020 to <laughs> over half a million at the beginning of 2022. If you knew about him before watching this video, you probably knew him for more of his Humpty Dumpty era than his Lego Jim slash cookie fail one. Is he still a brick filmer? I'll leave that up to you to decide. Thack. Thack stands for 24 Hour Animation Contest and is one of the longest standing annual brick filming contests. In Thack, entrants have 24 hours to make a brick film entirely from scratch that are based on a story theme that's announced at the beginning of the contest. It first started in 2005 being hosted on BrickFilms.com with 22 entries submitted for the very first contest. But 17 years, 18 Thacks, 9 hosts, and one website change later, Thack is stronger than ever, with Thack 2022 having 120 entries back in January. The challenge is gruelling, with many entrants staying up the full 24 hours and racing into the last few minutes to submit their entries. I've done this a few times myself, and yeah, it's pretty hard. But despite the challenge, it's probably the most fun you can have as a brick filmer with entrants often documenting their journey with behind the scenes videos called Thackumentaries. It's a time in which the community comes together, unified under the goal of making brick films together. This is Forlorn Creature signing off, on to the next one. Tier 3, Bricks in Motion. <laughs> Bricks in Motion is an online community of brick filmers and the channel you are currently watching. It was founded initially in 2001 as a personal website for storing brick films, tutorials, and even animation software. We'll talk more about its history later. Bricks in Motion was launched as a community website for brick filmers in 2008 and has been going strong ever since. It's the host for various contests such as the annual FAC, Brawl, and Summer Competition. In 2016, Bricks in Motion released a full-length documentary aptly titled Bricks in Motion. The globally spanning documentary catalogued the lives of brick filmers around the world, delving into what makes this hobby and those in it unique. Now that they're done patting themselves on the back, let's keep going. Brick Film Day! Brick Film Day is a brick filming community centered around their annual Brick Film Day event. On the titular Brick Film Day, which if you're watching this on the day of release, is today. Anyone can submit a brick film or video about brick filming, with the hook being hundreds of people releasing a video on the same day. Brick Film Day started in 2018 as a celebration of the 45th anniversary of Journey to the Moon, the first known brick film in history. It's grown each year to a massive degree, with Brick Film Day 2021 having 280 videos submitted, all of them different, albeit. In addition to the Brick Film Day itself, they also host a summer brick film competition, 
and make their collaborative trailer recreations, which have garnered millions of views and recognition from big names like Mark Hamill, which has 10 letters, and Ryan Johnson, which has 11. Brawl. <laughs> Brawl stands for Brick Film Rapidly All Week Long, and it's one of Bricks in Motion's annual contests. It's a timed contest similar to that, except instead of 24 hours, entrants have a full week to make up Brick Film. This often results in longer, more polished entries than Thack. It started in 2008 by Munza Papa on the Bricks in Motion refugee camp, and after that has been hosted on Bricks in Motion ever since. Because Brawl is a week-long contest instead of 24 hours, one might expect there to be more entries. However, that is not the case. Thack has been receiving more than 100 entries recently, while Brawl has been in the 60s and 70s, with bell bottoms, rock music, and hippies. Just goes to show you that if you give brick filmers enough time, they'll find a way to procrastinate and not get anything done. Henry and Edmund? Henry and Edmund is a series created by brick filmer en français Maxime Marion. The series, following the comedic hijinks of the titular duo, made a big impression on the community with its 2008 debut, The New Neighbor, whose story and visuals were of notably high quality compared to contemporaries of its era. The series would come to be most well known for its second installment, Copyright, a sprawling 36-minute epic that sees the duo running from the law after pirating a song online, something we're all too familiar with. The film saw tremendous acclaim upon its release for its story, uncommonly well developed for a brick film, and insane action sequences. It swept the Bricks in Motion Awards upon release and has since come to be, almost unanimously, if I say so myself, one of the most best brick films of all time. It's really such a special series. Henry and Edmund are two of brick filming's most memorable characters for good reason and Maxime imbues them with a sense of personality that only grows stronger as the series progresses. Definitely check this out if you haven't, this series is a complete classic. LEGO Studios After a dip in sales of LEGO in the late 1990s, the LEGO group needed a new angle to market themselves to a new audience. And with the creeping merge of technology and toys, LEGO wanted to get in on the action and teamed up with Steven Spielberg to create LEGO Studios, which was a line of sets for those who wanted to start making their own LEGO videos. The main Movie Maker set came with a webcam and animation software for users to use while animating. Also released were several film-related sets, such as Jurassic Park and Spider-Man-themed tie-in LEGO sets. Despite the image quality of the camera itself not being particularly great, it was an influential part of online brick filming history, as it was used by many early brick filmers such as Philip Heinrich, Nathan Wells, Sean Willits, and many more. Hi ho, Kermit the Frog here from 123 Sesame Street. I'm here to talk about mod elements. Mod elements are part of both Thack and Brawl. If you've ever seen a brick film and seen two random colored bricks out in the open, or a giant letter taped to the wall for no reason, these are mod elements. At the beginning of each contest, the mod elements are revealed. An example would be red and blue bricks and the letter F. The participants would have to include touching red and blue bricks or the letter of the day, F, to indicate that they have made their entry within the time span of the contest. Originally, you had to have a mod element in every frame, and everyone eventually realized that was really dumb. So it changed to being included to every shot, and eventually everyone realized that was kinda dumb too. So a 15 second grace period was added, where no mods were necessary. America Outlawed America Outlawed is a 2007 western brick film by Doug Vandegriff. Following an outlaw's run from the law after a narrowly escaped hanging, this movie just has a fun place in the canon because back in the late 2000s, it was a lot of people's first feature-length brick film experience. 36 meaty beefy, I'm talking this prime rib here, minutes that contained a consistent, pretty high level of quality. Trolling around YouTube and brickfilms.com back then 
you kinda got used to expecting long form brick films like this to be, you know. So seeing this film just pop out of nowhere with its dark and moody opening scene, and this big old western world filled with the bandits and the lawmen and them gambling boys, they do so much gambling, is a some real deal instant classic. Burn into your brain forever material, know what I mean? Doug followed up this film with, of course, a 30 minute movie about none other than the pirates. Pirates, they're like cowboys, but underwater. So check both of these out. These are some real classic Amtakaia. Now that's a good uh, break film. It's Mini Life TV. Mini Life TV is an ongoing brick film series by Chris Salasis and Ian Holmquist. The rare example of serialized or episodic brick filming to advance beyond an initial crop of episodes and blossom into an ongoing series, which in 2022 celebrated its 10th anniversary. Following the exploits of fictionalized versions of Chris and Ian, the series initially took the form of a sketch or variety show, before growing into more ongoing storylines and season-long story arcs. The series is actually released in the same manner as a TV show would, with each season releasing episodes in a weekly manner, followed by hiatuses of varying length between each season while the actors negotiate a pay raise. Over its decade of production, the show has put out five whole seasons, as well as a side series, Mini Life Chronicles. With the production quality increasing quite significantly over its run, check this puppy out. Chris is currently in production on a full movie about this crazy, wild, and wacky show. So now's a good time to binge the back catalog. Go ahead, we'll wait. It's the nightly news at nine. <clears throat> the nightly news at nine was a series created by brick filmer and host of Brick 101, Dave Pickett, starting in 2007, and the last entry being released in 2013. Nightly News at 9 followed a newscast for New Block City as news anchors Phil Brickley and Sherry report on wacky shenanigans going on in the city, including an escaped supervillain and the war between the colors green and orange. The series gained several million views overall and was embraced by both the brick filming community and the general public. One of the series' most impressive aspects was the set and character designs. After many requests by fans, Dave Pickett made several videos about how to create different characters and designs from Nightly News at 9. Gradually, they shifted from specific Nightly News at 9 builds to any general LEGO builds, which sparked Brick 101. And while Brick 101 essentially ended in 2018, there are a plethora of great and creative builds on their channel. Bound. Bound. Bound, also known as Bound, the epic LEGO Movie official full feature is a 2015 Christian religious spiritual gospel Jesus feature length brick film created by Monotogo Studios. The story of the quest of two kitties out to save their dastardly brother from a scary man. This film was in production for a little over half a decade before its 2015 release and in that time built up considerable hype being part of the glorious every couple years cycle of big feature length brick films that feel just like real movies Yum, eating the popcorn with the big epic sets and following a short kickstarter campaign in 2013 the film was finally released march 16th of 2015 on digital video disc that's dvd quite unusual for the era the film was released exclusively on paid DVDs instead of free on the internet. Which isn't a bad thing, getting paid for your art is, <laughs> that's great, how it should be. But on June 3rd, a little over a year later, Monotogo releases the film for free, stating in a post on Bricks in Motion that, we had an international distribution contract for the film and had pre-sales ranging well above the film's budget. At least six international countries had requested it for distribution, and more than one for theatrical release. It was getting overdubbed in French, 
The Berlin Film Festival requested permission to show it, but then a little crew known as the Lego Group saw how Bound was doing, and they're a little zealous for their brand protection. One letter from their legal department commanding us to cease and desist was all it took. So our loss is your gain. Dean Cook gets. This was a brick film trend that started in 2009, in which comedian Dane Cook was brutalized and often killed in silly and absurd ways, set to the song Karma Police by Radiohead. The first entry was Chihuahua's film, Dane Cook gets slapped by a hobo with a fish. Over the next year, many different brick films came out using this format, and while the trend died down after that, many brick filmers would include Dane Cook in the background of their films. Journey to the Moon Journey to the Moon is a 1973 brick film that holds the honor of being the first brick film ever made, as far as we know, which is as far as Penta knows, and he knows everything there is to know about brick filming, because that's what he does with his spare time. Therefore, this is the genuine, original gangster brick film. Filmed over two months by cousins Lars and Henrik Hassing as a gift for their grandparents for their golden wedding anniversary, this Super 8 film follows the blocky paper mache coated journey of a bunch of little astronauts to the adorable little moon. While the plot itself isn't much of a fully fleshed out narrative, it is a perfect first brick film. In Reise till Moonen, as those crazy Danes call it, has just vibes for days. It's fuzzy, chunky landscapes plonked on top of ping pong tables and living room floors. The little cutout starlets of outer space that the spaceship just glides across. The moon landing scene that's just harrowing in a way that few brick films are. Did they really just film this in their living room like it seems they did the rest of the movie? Only in 1973 Denmark can some goofy kids get away with something this dangerous for the sake of a Lego movie. And top that all off with the delightful connections to George Melies' early cinema gemstone. A trip to the moon is absolute perfection. And big old grandpappy loved the film so much that after the cousin showed it to him at the grandparents' wedding anniversary, he phoned up the CEO of Lego, who then invited the cousins up to screen the film at Lego's headquarters and rewarded them for their troubles with a tour of the Lego factory and free Lego. And thus, brick filming was born. Get back, you beast, you harrowing thing. Put that thing back where it came from, also help me. <laughs> a brick film released in 2006 by Nathan Wells. One of the most popular brick films in early YouTube era. It plays second in the fame, infamy, and glory contest, and it follows the story of a scientist named Dr. Wilson who's trying to find a cure for cancer and deals with the death of his lab assistant. For the time, it was rare to have brick films with fully fledged narratives beyond those simple one to five minute stories. So 10 minutes was a rarity. Additionally, the level of detail in the sets and cinematography was rarely seen at the time because it gained hundreds of thousands of views and was well renowned in the brick filming community during early YouTube. It was one of the first that many brick filmers saw and inspired many to pick up the hobby. Biff and Mario The longest running brick film series, which maintains a dedicated cult following, Biff and Mario is known for its mischievous humor, riding the line between cleverness and crudeness, with standout writing by Andy Boyer and voice acting by Dave Lenny. The series originated in 1989 with Oh Well, which was one of the first brick films to be dialogue-based and to feature more extensive audio editing. This was followed in the 90s by the epic adventure film T.E. and the deranged and psychedelic Heart of Darkness, which remains a brick film experience unlike any other. What these films lack in frame rate, they more than make up for in humor, which, while obviously influenced by Bill and Ted, is perhaps more reminiscent of Beavis and Butthead or South Park, despite predating both of those. Biff and Mario returned in 2003 with the classic brick film Taco Trouble, which is regarded as the best entry point into the series, due to being better made and probably the funniest. Although the quality of the animation was still behind the standard in the community at the time, 
It was janky in just the right sort of way that it seemed to make it even funnier, and Taco Trouble continued to attract devoted fans as the years went on. Despite featuring a duo, Taco Trouble was completely different in style from the blunty influence dynamic duo films that were popular in the community at the time, and featured some of the outsider brick film trademarks such as filming outside, setting things on fire, and cutting up Lego. In 2004, Biff and Mario appeared in the short brick films Bork and Breaking News, after which they were not seen again for many, many years. However, a script had been written in 2003 for Taco Trouble 2, The Trial, which was eventually filmed by resident brick film historian and Biff and Mario superfan, Penta, in cooperation with Boyer and Lenny, and released in 2021. Rick and Steve Rick and Steve, the happiest gay couple in all the world, was a brick filming miniseries created by Q. Alan Bracca that ran from 1999 to 2000. Known for its frank depiction of sexuality and the controversy it attracted from media and the Lego group. Following the comedic, often raunchy exploits of the titular couple and their assorted friends, Bracca created the series as his first year master's film at Cal Arts. The series was a success on the festival circuit, even screening at the Sundance Film Festival, a rare example of a brick film breaking out into the mainstream film space. But with this notoriety came controversy, with some media outlets becoming incensed at the mixture of the child-friendly Lego medium with the series' often sexually explicit subject matter. The series eventually bubbled up enough publicity to find itself in the crosshairs of the LEGO group itself. While LEGO, at times, talks a big game about removing LEGO films with adult content and subject matter, Rick and Steve was the rare instance of LEGO doggedly pursuing the removal of a film, with much greater ferocity than they ever had before, or since. The threat of legal action led to the film being ripped from the festival circuit and largely removed from the internet, although it can still be found if you know the right places to look. However, in spite of this blow, Bracca came out pretty swimmingly after Logo, an LGBTQ network, picked up Rick and Steve as a full television series, animated with blocky, kinda Lego but not quite characters, and running for two seasons. Bobby Burns, Chicken Feet Films. Bobby Burns is a YouTuber who's had a bit of an interesting career on the platform, but you might not know that he's actually got his start as a brick filmer. Under the moniker of Chicken Feet Films, Bobby's brick films, whether intentionally or not, rode the YouTube brick film trends. From IP films based on Marvel DC superheroes or recreating well-known films like The Matrix, to overly dramatic war brick films with goofy muzzle flares and food coloring blood. In 2014, he made the switch to more YouTuber content away from brick films and shorts released movie reviews and reaction videos remarking on trends on the platform and on the work of other creators. It was through this switch that led him to his confrontation with and subsequent quote-unquote collaboration with famous YouTuber Shane Dawson. Wait, wait, what? Oh my god, I didn't know that, huh? <laughs> this unlikely team-up between a small-time YouTuber and one of the original giants of the platform saw Bobby moving out to LA, making his own videos for one of the biggest channels on the internet, getting subsequently nixed from said humongous channel, rebooting his own content like five different times, and then just jettisoning everything he'd done in favor of, of emo rap. <laughs> to say it's a lot is an understatement. One of the wilder about faces we've seen from any brick filmer. But in spite of all the twists and turns in his career and life, Bobby Burns still remains at it creating content of sorts. The Citizen of the Year. Oh, all right, now we're getting to the good stuff. In 2004, a man by the name of Watson released his one and only brick film called The Citizen of the Year. It follows a douche nozzle of a man as he tries to help a bum in an attempt to win the annual Citizen of the Year award instead of his neighbor, Balzer. Upon release, the BrickFilms.com community enjoyed it about as much as any other decent brick film. But it wasn't until about a year later when member Dragoon wrote a lengthy review gushing about it. In a follow-up post, he wrote, <coughs> The grace of the Lord who has endowed this gift upon us, the Citizen of the Year. Let us stand together in joy. Let us utilize this graceful medium to see deeper into each other's hearts. 
Let us love. Let us cherish. And let us hope. <clears throat> and thus, the Citizen of the Year craze was born. To celebrate Dragoon's reviews, the entire month of September has become known as Septemberfest. In 2010, a Septemberfest contest was created. However, it had no relation to the Citizen of the Year. But in both 2015 and 2020, there were Septemberfest contests, both themed around it. Spite Your Face One of the most legendary brick filming duos, Spite Your Face is the brainchild of British animators Tony Mines and Tim Drage, and are responsible for some of the most iconic and well-known brick films of the early 2000s, if not all time. After getting their start with the black and white 8mm horror spoof All of the Dead, Tim and Tony created the 2001 spoof One, A Space Odyssey, kicking off an absolutely legendary run of film parody brick films whose quality still holds up massively well to this day. Following the success of One, they were commissioned by the LEGO Group and Monty Python to make a LEGO recreation of the Knights of the Round Table sequence from Monty Python and the Holy Grail, a brick film that was very popular on the early internet and the first of many collaborations between Spite Your Face and the LEGO Group. Besides Monty Python, their next most well-known works are Spider-Man The Peril of Doc Ock and The Han Solo Affair, two other high-quality films that have been highly inspirational to brick filmers of yesterday and today, with accomplished animation, set design, and staging that made the films instantly stand out against most other brick films of the era. These films, along with their fabulous scary thriller made to promote LEGO Studios, are some real brick filming classics that have stood the test of time 20 years and on. Circle Circle Dot Dot Circle Circle Dot Dot is a 2007 brick film created by Blunty3000, whom we've already discussed on this iceberg for his influence over early brick filming trends. This film, easily his most famous, was one of the first brick films to gain widespread fame and recognition in the early days of YouTube, a time when most brick films were hosted on personally owned websites or other early video sharing sites. The film is a music video for the song of the same name by rap duo Jamie Kennedy and Stu Stone, who you might recognize as the star of Son of the Mask and the 15th person on the Donnie Darko IMDb page, respectively. The duo starred in an MTV reality series Blowin' Up, following their attempts to transition from acting into successful rap stars. It's a show, alright. Keyword on attempt. The show documents the production of their debut, and only, studio album, on which Circle Circle Dot Dot is featured along with other classic hip-hop standards like Rollin' with Bob Saget, Crooked Stick, I Don't Want Beef Skit, Mattress Mac, and Celebrity Stalker. The duo held a contest where fans could create their own music videos for the song, with the winning entry becoming its official one. Blunty here whipped up and submitted his video in a little under two days, featuring legofied versions of the duo shaking it and just being the teensiest little bit misogynistic. Circle, circle, dot, dot, yo, this is working, please don't stop. Now kindly please remove your top and please don't say that you're a cop. Blunty's music video ended up winning the contest, and a few days later was featured on the front page of YouTube, the first brick film ever to do so, driving an immense amount of traffic and attention to the video and the song. This is definitely a brick film widely known among a certain era of early internet denizens, even among those outside the brick film community. It was also essentially the height of their music career as it faded into obscurity and they never released another again. IP versus non-IP brick films, oh boy, here we go. So for those of you who don't know, IP stands for intellectual property, basically meaning a certain brand. In the case of brick filming, IP brick films include things like Star Wars, Batman, Marvel and DC, Jurassic Park, and so on and so forth. Due to their brand recognition, IP brick films often gain far more views than non-IP brick films, often referred to as original brick films. This divide still goes on today in some circles, and traces back even to the advent of YouTube. The BrickFilms.com community focused on making original brick films, while many who stuck to YouTube as their means of community liked making IP brick films. The YouTube IP brick films often were of lower animation and production quality. Many in the BrickFilms.com community became resentful of the popularity of these films, and a sense of elitism started to form. A post from 2007 reads, Something that annoys me extremely is how on YouTube, the films with the most views are either those by Blunty because of Circle Circle Dot Dot, 
or poorly made films based on video games like Counter-Strike or GTA. This has two big reasons. First of all, the lower quality films often have very general titles, like LEGO War Movie or Big LEGO Battle, making them easier to find with a few search terms. Second of all, many YouTubers have short attention spans and prefer little gimmicks they can forget about to longer films with more drama in them. Another reads, Brick films based on pre-existing things normally get the most YouTube videos. This is why the first video you see when searching for LEGO Halo pisses me off so much. In the following years, the YouTube algorithm has definitely exacerbated this divide, rewarding films with brand-recognized titles, sometimes regardless of quality. Additionally, with LEGO expanding their branded set lines, IP brick films are more popular than ever. Many of those in the brick filming community that focus on making original brick films to this day remain a bit frustrated that their films don't receive the same recognition as IP brick films do. Though nowadays, the IP brick films that become popular are much more often up to technical standard. Left Field Studios In the weird middle years of this wacky hobby, few brick filmers left as solid an impact as the team of Left Field Studios. Comprised of brothers Jonathan and Nathaniel Hellerman and friend Billy Gribben, as well as a myriad of other siblings and friends, the group made an unusually large amount of absolutely classic films that are still well regarded to this day for their clever writing and visual gags that far outstripped that of their contemporaries. But the group is without a doubt most well known for their feature length Star Wars parody, The Great Disturbance. Originally conceived as a short protest film bemoaning the horrific abuse of CGI in the prequel and special edition films, The Great Disturbance quickly ballooned and diverged from its original conceit over its 16 month production, becoming a wide ranging parody of Star Wars writ large. Following the escapades of Obi Wan and Jar Jar investigating the titular disturbance in the Force, the film is an epic in scale and ambition. The film quickly landed as a major milestone in the hobby, both for being the longest brick film ever made at the time of release, and for its surprisingly consistent pace, comedy, and quality in spite of said length. Even today, The Great Disturbance is still a great watch. While the effects and image quality certainly look very much from 2004, it only adds to the playful and distinctly left-fielder charm of the whole affair. It certainly aged much better than a plethora of other fan films, long and short, from the era. Because of the very copyrighted but very choice soundtrack, the film got yeeted off of YouTube, but the film survived via copies downloaded from the original release thread, and is currently available to watch via the Brick Films wiki. Check it out. Robota in the ongoing conversation of what brick films can be considered the very best, Mark Birteau's 2005 film Robota is a title you may hear frequently come up, and when you see it, you'll understand why. Though it follows a fairly simple story of a wheelchair-bound robot exploring a dingy automaton city, it's in the execution that this film stands apart. The characters are massive brick-built puppets, in contrast to the minifigures populating 99% of all other brick films with accordingly large and detailed environments that lend the film a sense of scale uncommon for the average brick film. Though it may be a cliché to describe it as looking so professional you forget that you're watching Legos move, this film truly is a shining example of just that, utilizing its medium to maximum effect. The blocky nature of Lego lends itself well to its monochromatic, mechanical, and artificial atmosphere. A great example of the filmmaker using the unique properties of LEGO to tell a story that's enhanced by the aesthetic. Star Wars is one of the most popular intellectual properties to be recreated in brick film form, dating as far back as the late 70s. One of the most unique fan Star Wars brick films was a trailer for Star Wars Episode 3. It wasn't a recreation, but it was pretty accurate to Revenge of the Sith. What makes it special is that it was released in 2002, three years before the release of the actual film, and it predicts a lot of things in the final film. It was released by brick filmer Jay Silver as part of Brickfest in July 2002, only a few months after the release of Attack of the Clones. There are a lot of similarities to the final film, such as Anakin and Obi-Wan fighting around fire and lava, and Jedi being hunted down, but a few similarities are more specific, such as Padme saying, I feel like I hardly know you anymore, which is almost exactly like, I don't know you anymore, and how Jedi starfighters are pretty similar to what's in the final film. 
Just Kidding Animation Influence Joni Phillips is an indie animator and filmmaker. Known for her eclectic yet heartfelt films that feature strange cartoonishly lo-fi art contrasted with deeply personal stories and thematic content. Joni's work, including fully self-funded feature films as well as a pilot for Frederator Studios, has garnered her a dedicated following in certain animation circles. Before creating this more widely known work, Joni got her start in the brick filming community in the early 2010s. Her films in this period exude a lot of the off-the-wall, low-fidelity aesthetics of her future work, with snappy animation, grainy image quality, and plot lines that straddle the boundaries of coherent and stream of consciousness. While Joni would eventually move on from brick films into an animation style that's somehow both more traditional yet more experimental than her LEGO animation work, her style and films would go on to have a wide influence for their innovative use of highly stylized and cartoony animation. At a time where most brick films look like Matt, how's it yeah, going? It was, it was something about it. Joni's films borrowed heavily from 2D animation, pushing minifigure animation to extremes few have attempted before. Even if animators weren't in as cartoony of a mode as Joni or inspired by her work directly, animators in the 2010s began treating LEGO minifigures in a much more loose and malleable way than in decades prior, and began borrowing more and more techniques from 2D animation. While she is rightfully more well known for her more recent work, the influence of her relatively short time in the brick filming sphere is hard to overstate. Grace. Grace is a 2006 brick film by Robinson Wood and has gone down as one of the classics since it was first released as an entry for the BrickFilms.com Fame, Infamy, and Glory contest. Upon release, the film almost immediately stood above brick films of its time in a plethora of aspects, exemplified by its iconic opening scene. Robinson achieved character and combat animation that, despite adhering to the limited movement of LEGO minifigs, still feels alive and fluid. Additionally, the voice acting was next level in a way that's rarely seen even today. Brick filmers, typically, are amateurs voice acting for their own work, usually with little to no prior acting experience or inadequate recording equipment. And with many being children and teenagers still living with their parents, voice performances often sound hushed in a let's not wake up mom and dad kind of way. So it's really hard to overstate just how much this specific moment really stood out when the film was first released. Cecil! You won't die, Travis. Cecil! That scream is still an iconic moment in a voice performance that goes down in brick film history. Captain Bulldog. In the 2000s, the Boyle brothers were a well-known trio of brick filmers consisting of Captain Bulldog, Shale, and 2-Bit, and they would also collaborate together on films in which they'd starred as themselves. After they began uploading their brick films to YouTube, the brother who pulled ahead as the most widely known was Captain Bulldog, who was extremely prolific. Captain Bulldog was known for multiple recurring series, including The Pilgrims, The Spirit Stompers, and Hide and Suck. Films in these series could often be around 10 minutes long, and on top of those, Captain Bulldog would also regularly release music videos and other standalone films. His brick films had a distinct aesthetic with an unusual usage of custom clay elements, and he was also one of the major pioneers of extensive use of out-of-socket animation, as most notably seen in his most viewed brick film, The Great Pumpkin Carver, from 2009. All of the Boyle Brothers last released brick films in 2010, and soon after disappeared from the community. But their films continued to live on, until one day in 2018, when Captain Bulldogs' YouTube channel was automatically deleted, allegedly due to multiple or severe violations of YouTube's policy against spam, deceptive practices, and misleading content or other terms of service violations. Attempts to email Captain Bulldog regarding this were not successful, and given that there had been no activity on the channel in years, it is theorized that his Google account was hijacked and used maliciously, resulting in its deletion, which had the side effect of pulling the channel down along with it, but this is just speculation. Since this channel deletion, it is not uncommon to see people who fondly remember Captain Bulldog's brick films asking around about where they have gone, but luckily, 
All the videos that were on the channel have been downloaded for the Brickfilm archive and are available to watch on the Jason Boyle Brickfilms wiki page. Captain Bulldog is possibly the highest profile Brickfilmer whose entire YouTube channel was just wiped out of existence and serves as a cautionary tale that you can never truly be sure that your videos will always stick around on YouTube. Hello, I am Sanjira. Let's keep it a roll. Girl. Released in 2001, Girl is a music video of the song The Little Girl by John Michael Montgomery about a little girl who escapes her tumultuous family life with the help of Jesus. Created by Egoless, a prominent community member at the time, it was one of the earlier brick films to receive wider attention from mainstream media, and also one of the first to court controversy due to its, as they say, adult content. <laughs> Egoless was well known at the time for his frequent use of spiritual imagery and themes in his films. I noticed last night that you don't pray. If you had a wife and a family to keep, you would never have time to pray either. And this film was certainly one of the most overt with its intentions. In the review for its BrickFilms.com directory submission, its reviewer described it as admittedly a bit of Christian propaganda and maybe the most serious film we have had on BrickFilms to date but still recommended the film for its, at the time, innovative effects, such as superimposing semi-transparent characters for a ghost effect. But others would not receive the film as warmly. While you can't say that the film is at all positive towards the illicit acts that it depicts, it nonetheless courted controversy from several news media outlets, most acutely in Denmark, the home of the LEGO group. Legetøjsfirmaet Legos figurer er endt på rollelisten i flere amerikanske film. Lego-mænd og damer optræder i scener med sex og vold. Det vil virksomheden nu have stoppet. It's all about sex, violence and drugs. Strong social realism. Frequently paired with Q. Allen Bracca's Rick and Steve, both were put forth as examples of LEGO fans and animators pushing the boundaries of decency. The news broadcast even added their own like goofy sound effects that weren't present in the original what? movie, just to, just to punch home up. how just extreme these LEGO videos were. <laughs> a spokesperson for the LEGO group, when asked for comment on films like Girl, gave a strong note of disapproval, and even brought up the possibility of legal action to get the films taken down. But according to Eagleus, Lego never actually followed through on such a threat for his film. And when the New York Times contacted Lego's American branch for its short profile on Girl and other brick films of the era, it struck a far more practical tone, not seeing any point pursuing legal action since the films weren't made for profit or anything. Robucca. Robucca is a Finnish brick filmer known for his experimental, abstract, and altogether surreal brick films. First joining the community in 2003 and continuing to be active until this day, his films largely eschew traditional stories and narrative in favor of, well, uh, some, some of the weirdest stuff you'll find in brick filming. Early films like Rohati and Mortigi Muta illustrate a lot of the unique characteristics that continue to mark his work, mainly reoccurring characters like the little blockheady dude and technique figurines, as well as bizarre soundscapes and original music. Despite this oddness, Robucca displayed from the beginning a level of vision and technical competence, showing he was already well in control of his craft, with the ending hallway chase in Rohati still being an impressive shot 20 years later. One might say that Rebecca's work divides into three eras. His first era includes the previously mentioned films, which were certainly far more abstract than those of almost all his contemporaries, but still contained what could somewhat be described as a plot or a story. In his second era in the late 2000s, Rebecca would jettison narrative almost entirely in favor of dense, often chaotic visual experiments, where oftentimes it's hard to even tell you're looking at Lego. But it's definitely the era where you really get a sense for his penchant for experimenting with weird new tech and crazy filters. After taking a break from the community between 2010 and 2017, Rebecca returned! While still keeping the experimental spirit alive, his films are definitely the most accessible they've ever been, with some taking the vibe of weird music videos that weave evocative cinematography and lighting with even crazier soundtracks, as well as further experimentation with filters and weird mobile apps as well. Contributing to almost every brick film 
national competition and posting with insane regularity, they've continued to be one of the most prolific brick filmers, with the aforementioned Rohati continuing as a series in its own weird little way to this very day. Stromedy Another bizarre example of a brick filmer popping out of the weird Lego corner of the internet to vastly greater success and popularity in the wider YouTube space. Stromedy, aka Kyle Godfrey, is a YouTuber of the illustrious scary clown haunting video genre. You won't believe this! With over 3 million subscribers and almost a billion views to his name, this G list YouTube celebrity actually got to start making Lord of the Rings brick films. He was primarily active in the early 2010s, when the release of both the Hobbit film trilogy and the Lego themes based on the Hobbit and Lord of the Ring films respectively gave rise to a genre of IP brick films that rivaled mainstays like Star Wars and Harry Potter. And the popularity of animators like Brotherhood Workshop only increased this fervor for films of the Hobbity variety. Kyle was one such young fan, releasing a series of films between 2012 and 2015, consisting mostly of crude recreations of the films set to tinny recordings of scenes through his computer speakers. They're not the highest art, you could say. A wizard is never late. But he soon pivoted to more traditional YouTuber -y content. Smosh like sketch videos with clickbait thumbnails, public prank videos, gets tackled! X number things videos. It was when he finally settled on parentheses insane paranormal videos that he truly reached YouTuber semi superstardom. First sneaking into abandoned demon houses, then facetiming Elmo as he drinks a speed potion and comes for me, and finally settling on CLOWN when your drone sees clowns on jet skis at Clown State Lake. Do not let them on your boat. RUN! <laughs> when you see clowns at a news station broadcasting the news, RUN AWAY AS FAST AS YOU CAN! When you see clown paramedics with an ambulance helping this injured clown, RUN! <laughs> Clown Hospital? Question mark? Dane. Dane stands for Depth Aware Video Frame Interpolation. Somehow, it's an AI video algorithm made for smoothing the motion between two frames of a video, with the intention of increasing, quote unquote, the frames per second, making it look smoother. It takes two frames of animation and literally creates, just, just like guesses new frames in between them. For the brick filming community, it's the bane of our existence. The most infamous example of Dane and brick filming is the video boosting stop motion to 60 FPS using AI, in which Dane is applied to the brick film Apollo 11, a Lego story. And while yes, the animation is... SMOOTHER! It completely wrecks any sense of speed and momentum to the animation that was originally intended. Unfortunately, I, it just it feels like the byproduct of a way of thinking in brick filming and in the wider animation community that smoother looking is inherently better, which isn't always true, but we don't have like five hours for me to get into that, so whatever! The Benny and Lee Wall. Benny and Lee is a dynamic duo series created by brick filmer and Lego animation archivist legend Silly Penta, one of the longer running series in this subgenre, with the first films featuring the goofy Benny and the straight man Lee, along with their talking skeleton pal Skelly, premiering in 2007 and continuing into the 2020s. One of the most notable visual icons of the series. One you may have already noticed from the footage so far is the insane, humongous, horrifying stain on the wall behind the characters. It's basically impossible to miss, and if you jump in on the show with the more recent episodes, it's certainly one of the more striking images you'll find in the brick filming world. I don't recall it ever looking this bad. Yeah, I knew we shouldn't have upgraded to a DSLR. This teensy little blemish comes from the episode Benny Lee's Valentine Special, where while playing some classic video games, the gang is visited by Death themselves, come to bring Skelly to the fiery pits of hell. But when Death is unmasked by a rambunctious feline, sparks fly, and the two start going on cute macabre dates together. But all isn't well, as we come to see Death was working under the thumb of legendary anti-video game lawyer Jack Thompson the whole time, who aims for Death to lull Skelly to a false sense of security before finally killing him. 
You gotta kill that skeleton before he takes over your mind with his evil video games. But but it, but it's all good because because Skelly just just kind of kills death, so it's fine. Splattering their spaghetti sauce guts all over the wall. To quote Penta, we had this idea that something from each episode should remain in the house. In this one, you can still see the tree from the Christmas special. So I think we knew straight away that we would carry the same over and then examine that. And it stayed there. First, not too noticeable, but when Penta returned to the series after a short hiatus with a new HD webcam, yeah, and it only gets weirder and more fascinating as the years go by. And if Penta has anything to say about it, that stain ain't going anywhere anytime soon. Penta, I have a question. How much money would you have to take, would someone have to pay you to lick the salt? Yo, 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 no, and I, I see, my biggest concern would be uh, removing it, like doing any damage to it, you know? Oh, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> so your biggest concern is doing damage and not like, yeah. for what, that overrides the amount of money you would get as opposed to like your health? No, I don't care about that so much. <laughs> <laughs> the YouTube algorithm. The YouTube landscape has changed drastically over the past 17 years. Some changes good, a lot of them not. And unfortunately, some of those changes have been detrimental to entire communities, both the brick film community and the entire animation community at large. One of the biggest changes was in 2012 when YouTube changed how videos were recommended on other videos. Instead of videos being recommended based on views, they were now being recommended based on watch time. This resulted in an incentive to make longer videos and more frequent uploads, both of which are impossible for most brick filmers, who usually spend weeks or months on films that are only a few minutes long. Unfortunately, the brick film community hasn't really recovered from this problem, as the algorithm has remained in place. Brick films that would get tens to hundreds of thousands of views pre-2012 often only get a few thousand if they're lucky. Good Company, an adaption of Joseph Conrad's novella Heart of Darkness by early brick film auteur Nick Maniatis, this film is considered a milestone in the evolution of brick film storytelling. Telling the tale of Marlowe, a man on a quest to solve a mysterious disappearance, the film was notable upon its 2002 release for its complex, unorthodox story, using narrative misdirection in uncanny tone and abstract, unexplained elements and sequences to add tension and suspense. Originally created for the horror animation contest, the film had to be cut down to 10 minutes in order to get under the contest time limit. A relic of older brick filming contests that's rarely seen nowadays. Later, Nick uploaded the finished director's cut of the film, Good Company Redux, with an extended runtime and reworked ending. Even today, this film is just so unique in its atmosphere and the way that its story unfolds. Like, it's hard to think of any Burke film that's quite like it, even today. Definitely check it and the rest of Nick's workout. It's some really great stuff. The Castlevania series. The Castlevania series is the brainchild of Havanet Team, a Finnish cohort of brick filmers who created these horror fantasy films inspired by the game series of the same name, plus or minus a K or a C who's counting. The series started out fairly standard as far as brick film adaptions of game series go, with the first three films releasing in quick succession in 2003. The films certainly start with a certain level of polish. But the quality quickly improves and it also shows off just this really entertaining, dry, I guess, Finnish sense of humor. Simon vanha paskova kaakki ei kuitenkaan ollut halukas lähtemään matkalle, vaan jäi jääräpäisesti syömään kukkia. Also, it's got a lot of just really charming early 2000s like digital computer effects. It's it's just so cute. And then they came back mm, mm, nine years later with mm, mm, a two and a half hour fourth film that currently stands as the third longest brick film ever. Quote, Phew! We can't even now realize it's been 90 months since we started this animation. <laughs> this film is largely notable just for this Herculean effort and length. 
But it's just so, like, charming and kind of just cozy. How everybody talks and just these, these like, dulcet tones. And just these jerky After Effects-y anime fights. It's, it's just so charming. I don't freaking know, man. Castlevania, give it a go. Don't get your osteoporosis. Ancient YouTube Brick Films. There's a certain cohort of brick films that have been floating around on YouTube basically since the beginning of the platform, that reappear from time to time in recommendation feeds, prompting a wave of nostalgia and or anxiety at the slow creep of time as the years old calendar ticks uncomfortably higher and higher. Some fabulous artifacts of this goofy little trend or whatever you'd call it include Lego Harry Potter, Hermione, 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 Mickey Doonalds. Hey Spider-Man, I didn't know you worked here. Last time I checked, they weren't hiring. Well, you know. Well, you know what? Lego beer. Beer, beer, beer. Lego train. I just can't take the pain anymore. What the? Goodbye, cool world. Oh my god. And of course, the unforgettable. I am watching you pee. Brickfilms.com schism. <sighs> Easily one of the most dramatic and defining moments in the history of brick filming. Well, it happened long enough ago that a lot of newer members don't even know what happened or why. This is a crazy memory for all the grizzled vets of brick filming online. Buckle up, because this is about to get crazy. So starting in 2000, BrickFilms.com was the main hub online for brick filming. If you wanted to share your brick films with others and make some friends along the way, you'd do it right over there. Many brick filming legends came from BrickFilms.com. It was the birthplace of the modern brick filming community as we know it. In 2007, BrickFilms.com's then owner sold the website and made community mainstay and website programmer Schleips the site's main admin. While Schleips appeared as the owner at first, in actuality the site had been sold to another entity with no prior history in the community. Schleips became the primary arbiter over the community, while this group would silently handle day-to-day -day operations and make changes to try and make the site a more profitable asset. The most obvious change, a carpet hey. bomb of ads. As the members and Schleips discuss the changes, a new member with site admin privileges, under the moniker of Thick as a Brick, or TAB for short, suddenly joined the conversation. Representing the people who actually bought BrickFilms.com, TAB explained the new ads were necessary to keep the site running, and that becoming a site patron would allow you to get rid of those pesky ads. Further proof that BrickFilms.com was ahead of its time. As well as stating that BrickFilms was set to become, quote, part of a network of educational websites, unquote. Members were caught pretty off guard by this hit here too unheard of admin appearing with no explanation, and inquiries as to who Tab was or what they meant by the whole educational network thing went unanswered, but the need for ads was generally accepted. But the weird, unexplained changes kept on coming, with the site's online shop being silently switched over to an Amazon storefront selling wooden blocks and cements for some reason? The community grew more and more displeased with the opaque way the site, their community, was now being run, feeling like whoever was running the site was looking out for the bottom line more than they were the good of the community. Tab would return and take credit for the ads, and go on to state that, quote, while Schleips and the community would control 99% of the decision making, unfortunately, it just isn't practical to run every decision through community. I realize that this is a tough change for some to accept. Unquote. A decently stark change from the transparency of previous owners. These oblique posts still left many more questions than answers, and Tab was rarely around enough to even see the prompts for more info. In one rare but now infamous reply to a longtime member's plea for info and clarification, Tab would explain, quote, Don't expect a treasurer's report. This is a private company, and it ain't gonna happen. We'll continue to squander the patrons' money by plowing it back into the community and offering everyone here a chance to make, hopefully, a lot of money. Don't bother breaking this post down point by point. This is my final word on this topic. I will not be posting again anytime soon. 
By the way, did I mention that fundamentally there are no big changes in the works, Schleps is in charge, and there is no big conspiracy to disclose? Now stop wasting time and energy worrying, and start brick filming! Brick filming. Brick March 11th, 2008. Brickfilms.com members logged in to find another new tab post, announcing that Schleps was leaving Brickfilms.com to pursue other interests. But when contacted directly by concerned members, Schleps would say he did not leave voluntarily, but was forced out without warning and against his will. This change, the sudden removal of the one last link to the new ownership, inflamed the community. Threads and posts demanding explanation or expressing frustration were locked or deleted. Many of the community's moderators resigned in protest of Slapes' sudden demotion, and the forums quickly spiraled into trollish chaos as spammers flooded in in kind. The details behind Slapes' sudden removal started to come to light. Amidst the confusion and dismay of previous months from the site's general populace, Slapes found out that the owners planned to make their own clone of YouTube as well as shuttering the site's wiki, a font of information and resources for new and old members alike. Schleps, worrying for the community's future, started a project in secret. Working in the shadows in a small corner of hosting space on the brickfilms.com server, Schleps toiled on a new site, one closer to the ideals he'd felt brickfilms.com had exemplified before the handover, and then DM'd it to a trusted forum friend for feedback. The BrickFilms.com owners appeared to have discovered his covert operation from viewing this private conversation, and thereafter abruptly removed his status as admin, briefly changing his title on the forum to WANNABE YOU CAN'T MAKE THIS SHIT all, keeping all of these events hidden for the community in order to salvage Schleps' dignity. With not much left to lose, Schleps launched his new site on March 12, with the new name I Heart Brickfilming. The community began migrating in droves, with 150 signups in the first week alone. The site was rudimentary, containing just one forum, the appropriately titled Refugee Camp, as well as an IRC chat room, a sort of precursor to modern group messaging chat clients like Discord. The site's members also migrated Thack to the camp to lend it continuity and legitimacy. Despite everything, this Thack managed to be the largest ever, with the most entries to date. The site was slated to be renamed to BrickFilmers.com. But just as the new site seemed to be getting settled, the owners of BrickFilms.com struck back, slapping Schleps in the community with a cease and desist letter, coming from Charles Chuck Price of the Adirondack Manufacturing Corporation and husband of Cynthia Price, aka Thick as a Brick. According to the email Schleps received, the term BrickFilms was copyrighted and the property of the owners of BrickFilms.com. No, side note, we, this is only, this only applies when it's used as a website name, not when it uses like a generic term for the hobby or in films themselves. Like to be clear, brick, you, you can call things BrickFilms, you just can't make like a website that uses the, the name BrickFilms. You're, you're fine, you're not gonna get sued, you're, you're fine, you're fine. And thus, BrickFilmers.com was infringing on their copyright. The letter served them with the threat of legal action unless the domain was either changed or handed over to the Adirondack Corporation immediately. The new form needed a new name, and quick. But in this dark hour, among dark days and months, the community found salvation in the form of an old site from an old friend. Brick filming elder statesman Thomas Foote. Thomas's blessing, the community adopted the name of what was once his personal website BricksInMotion.com. Launching in December 2008, Bricks in Motion was now the premier destination for LEGO animators on the internet, with a few remaining members still hanging on at BrickFilms.com, evacuating in droves. The site, once the cradle for the LEGO animation community, was reduced to a ghost town. Its name a reminder of what was, but was no longer, the place the community's founding settlers called home. To anoint the new site, Schleps announced the Technical Excellence Competition, Bricks in Motion's first official contest, 
with brick film rapidly all week long or brawl, sprouting up soon after as a grassroots effort, a further sign of the community's renewed resolve and enthusiasm. With a fancy new logo, the community continued to grow and prosper into the 2010s, into the icon of brick film and community we have here today. Jarrah White Jarrah White is one of the most well-known names among moonlanding conspiracy theorists, with his website, moonfaker.com, even boasting the quote, Jarrah White is a soldier for the truth, from Joe Rogan. Prior to making a name for himself with years of seemingly endless moonfaker videos on YouTube, Jarrah White was well known to the community at brickfilms.com, where he was liable to spark up ridiculously long arguments about whether or not the moon landing really happened. Since 2003, he had been repeatedly speaking of his plans to make an Apollo moon hoax brick film, and after a couple of years of moon arguments, the community eventually convinced him to stop just talking about it and actually create and release the brick film, One Giant Leap for Mankind, in 2006. Jarrah White continues to make moon landing related videos to this day, and has mostly turned his attention to debunking flat earthers, due to his annoyance with flat earthers often being lumped together with moon truthers and making them look delusional by association. Newgrounds Legoland Despite being primarily geared towards flash animations, the website Newgrounds actually saw a brief fad of people creating stop motion brick films in 2000, completely separated from the community that was beginning to sprout on brickfilms.com around the same time. Unsurprisingly for Newgrounds, the brick films found here often had much more swearing and violence than those found elsewhere. Lego Boys Rap MC Red Man DJ Yellow Man Yippee Ki Yay Motherfucker there was even some drama when the first guy to upload brick films on Newgrounds, Sofa King, assumed he had invented the concept and didn't take kindly to a different person making a brick film and getting a higher rating from viewers. Sofa King made a brick film calling out Lego posers, and in response, the second Newgrounds brick filmer uploaded a video doxing Sofa King, which was soon removed. Sofa King then learned that Lego Studios predated his own first brick film, and so removed his Lego Posers video. After some more uploads from other people, the brick films on Newgrounds were compiled into a category called Lego Land, which boasted a header image very much in fitting with the vibe of the site. Newgrounds was a high profile site with somewhat of a focus on crass content, and eventually the Lego group came knocking and demanded that all videos featuring Lego be removed. For a long time, it was advised that you shouldn't upload a brick film to Newgrounds as it would be deleted. But in recent years, brick films have been allowed again, and some have even garnered more views on Newgrounds than they have on YouTube. EUB as the brick filming community evolves and changes, people come and go, and there's a certain something that can always be relied on. Every few years, it's more or less inevitable that someone will come along with the very bold claim that the brick filming community is dying. Examples of this sentiment have been traced back to even as early as 2002, so there's always someone who thinks that the community is dying when it has become different to how they once remember it. But let's go now to 2013, when once again this radical notion was concocted, this time by one Zachary Volt on the Bricks and Motion forums. Just a reminder that in this time period, Bricks and Motion was more or less the main online hub dedicated to brick filming. These were the days before Discord or Instagram, or a lot of smaller decentralized brick filming communities made in recent years. Mr. Volt came along with an idea to quote unquote save brick filming, and to do so, he would launch a new website called Earth's United Brick Filmers, or EUB for short. And it was more or less the exact same site as Bricks in Motion. Not many people joined, and members of the community heavily criticized it. Things weren't looking so good for Earth United Brick Filmers. So what would you do in this situation? Listen to the community? Rework the site to be innovative and distinct? Hell no! You create a whole other new website! And that's exactly what he did. Two weeks after the launch of EUB, Zachary Volt launched Brickety Split, a site which was also apparently supposed to be like the machinima network for brick filming. But there was something Bricks Emotion didn't have that Brickety Split did, and that was a page on Google Plus. Remember Google Plus? Yeah, I don't. Anyway, nobody joined Brickety Split, everything was silently shut down, and everyone moved on. The end. Hopefully, he doesn't mind us rehashing this story now and sees the amusement in it. <laughs> Isn't that right, Teddy? Wars of Darkness. AJ Valangia's The Wars of Darkness, at the time of recording, holds the title of longest brick film ever made, and at a plump, juicy 4 hours and 5 minutes long, will probably remain as such until the end of time itself, maybe. 
The titular Wars of the Dark Variety entail a prince running for his life after his father and kingdom are overthrown by the evil wizard Lord Selavast. He's gotta amass an army and take back the kingdom and all that, and you know the drill. What makes this film even more impressive is that it was shot and edited over the course of two years entirely in LEGO Studios. You know, the janky early 2000s animation program LEGO put out. The one that only let you make movies at postage stamp resolution and only gave you two audio tracks to work with. The movie's insane length made it too big for LEGO Studios to export. So AJ had to just play the editing preview and record his screen with a DVR. A goof that actually worked in the film's favour since it didn't undergo the crazy compression studios applied on export, making it, trust me, a much higher quality than most surviving studios films from the time. Yeah. And because the film was a bit too big to be posted on 2005 internet, AJ could only send out some snazzy DVD sets of the film to a number of people who were interested in giving it a watch until he eventually uploaded the film to YouTube in 2012. What's double doubly impressive about the film is that, in spite of its absolutely gargantuan length, it's actually a really fun watch. The film was shot in chronological order, and so over its runtime you get to watch AJ's skill and ambition grow over time, filling up the movie with these almost hour-long battle scenes that are just filled with so many insane creative kills and fights. Like a knight just getting ripped in half and devoured by two dragons. Or a whole battle scene with these elephants just stomping on everybody and impaling horses. And just this scene. And it just goes on and on from there until a genuinely crazy and epic final battle. This movie just oozes that fabulous, this should not be this good, outsider art energy. I really do recommend giving it your time. The film is online in two two-hour parts on YouTube, making it a more manageable watch, although be forewarned that it does take some time to really get going. Grab some buddies and some popcorn and sit down for a crazy time with this one. It's a real piece of history and honestly is pretty incredible. Lime Sloped Brick. On July 27th, the second trailer for the Stephen King horror movie It was released. It features the character Bill dropping and breaking a Lego build of a turtle. This prompted brick filmer Nathan Wells to tweet the observation that lime sloped bricks are included in the build and point out that the film takes place in 1989, despite those pieces not existing until 2010. Surprisingly, the tweet blew up and even had articles written about it with headlines like Fans won't let it escape dumb Lego mistake. This attracted the ire of people who didn't see the winking nature of the tweet, and for a brief period of time Nathan's mentions were flooded by people dunking on it. However, it did get the attention of one of the film's producers, Seth Graham Smith, who is also credited on some of the theatrical Lego movies, and who seems to just find the tweet amusing. Obscured Outlooks Obscured Outlooks is a cult brick film, entered into Brawl 2013 by the brick filmer known as Mickey. It rose to cult prominence because of its very loud piano and vocal performance, and seemingly bizarre and random lyrics about the protagonist's love for onion rings and the 2010 film Jonah Hex, with Josh Brolin. Sadly, it didn't win Brawl 2013 like it rightfully deserved, but it lives in our hearts forever. TAC INCIDENTS TAC has gone off without a hitch for the past number of years, but it hasn't always been that way. There have been a number of hiccups going back to the very beginning. On the day of the very first TAC, the host David West's alarm didn't go off, causing the contest to start half an hour late. For TAC 3, his power went out and his internet went down, rendering him unable to start TAC until two hours after the announced start time. This was in 2007, before iPhones or ways to access the internet using mobile data, so West was literally in the dark. For TAC 5, there were no internet or alarm problems, however, the contest was announced two days before the start date, which upset many in the community. So an additional round was announced for the next week, creating TAC 5A and TAC 5B. It was a very weird situation all around. TAC 8 started 40 minutes late because the host, Dylan Woodley, fell asleep at his keyboard. And the last TAC incident was in 2011 with TAC 9, in which host Cheshire, after being overworked by studying for finals, accidentally nodded off 10 minutes before the contest started, delaying the start of the contest. Fortunately, there have been no major incidents like this since then. Soldering your balls saves marriages. The second 24-hour animation contest occurred right around the release of the film Snakes on a Plane, 
which had garnered a lot of mimetic buzz on the strength of its attention-grabbing title. This served as inspiration for the community regular Timbo, who decided to create a Tech 2 entry with the amusing title Soldering Your Balls Saves Marriages. The film depicts Dr. Phil promising to save troubled marriages by soldering the husband's balls, though the specifics of how this is supposed to work are never really explained. Certain community members began raving about the film, with particular attention given to the soldering sequence featuring a standout vocal performance by longtime community member Mr. Graff. <laughs> Cohorts of Timbo helped spread the good word by advertising the film in their forum signatures, and the release thread for the film was eventually renamed to THE BEST BRICK FILM EVER MADE! Unfortunately, the greatness was not entirely recognised in the Thack 2 results, where the film only managed to place 10th in the entrance choice vote. Mr. Charlie. The Adventures of Mr. Charlie is one of only two series in brick filming that has seen releases spanning over 30 years. The high voiced and incredibly ill fated protagonist, Mr. Charlie, appeared in six brick films in the early 90s, which were primarily shot in live action, as was common for 90s brick films. Two decades later, the creator of the series began making new installments along with his young son, and eventually began shooting them in stop motion. The series remains pretty obscure, but would have appeal for fans of vintage LEGO and the anarchic spirit of outsider brick films. A Mr. Charlie film created for TikTok in 2021 put the series just barely behind Biff and Mario for the title of longest running brick film series. The Squire and the Scroll Occasionally, a brick film can achieve mythic status before it is even released, if hype is generated via impressive production material and previews posted across multiple years. Some examples of brick films that were already well known long before they were released are Beyond the Eleventh Dimension by Sloth Paladin and Welcome to Darkmoor by Squid, which each had people excitedly following their production for about six years, and also had people questioning if they would ever actually come out at all. One brick film that achieved a similar near-legendary status during its production but was never released is The Squire and the Scroll by Builder Brothers. In 2011, a production thread for this film was posted on Bricks in Motion, and Builder Brothers details their ambition for the project, with plans for it to be up to 30 minutes long and feature a fully original score. They began frequently posting updates demonstrating the efforts they are putting into set design, cinematography and VFX, and each one would be met with enthusiastic responses from community members clamouring for the full film, with multiple predictions that it was shaping up to potentially be one of the best brick films ever made. In 2012, a two minute trailer for the film was released, which greatly intensified the hype, especially at a time when people were still instantly wowed by noticeable digital effects work in brick films in contrast to the current appreciation for achieving as much as possible in-camera. Builder Brothers stated that their hope was to finish the film by the end of 2012, or, failing that, by summer 2013, but as most brick filmers are well aware, making such predictions is only setting yourself up for disaster, and production of the film continued to drag along for much longer, with the number of updates slowing down to only a couple per year. Each sporadic update would continue to generate a frenzied response, and the production thread eventually racked up well over 300 posts. A setback occurred when an earthquake hit California in mid-2014, wrecking the Builder Brothers sets and studio. They formulated a new plan to split the film into three 10-minute parts and release the first part soon, but this release did not occur, and updates remained sporadic for the rest of 2014 and throughout all of 2015, after which Builder Brothers stopped posting in the thread. Although most of the animation for the first two parts had been shot, the music and sound design was never finished, and the project still required complex digital work that Builder Brothers could no longer give the required amount of time to. Despite none of the three parts ever being released, The Squire and the Scroll is still remembered as one of the most hyped brick films in the history of Bricks in Motion, although, to be honest, it seems basically impossible that it could have lived up to the ridiculously inflated expectations of its followers from the time. The dark side of gameplay. Edgy and mature content in brick films has been another hotly contested topic in the brick filming community. While some enjoy bloody Lego wars filled with profanity, there are those who protest the use of what is ultimately a children's toy for edgier content. The Dark Side of Gameplay is a 2015 book written by three European professors about the quote, dark play of contemporary games and how there are controversial and mature issues in otherwise quote, playful environments. One section of the book mentions brick filming and the existence of violence in Star Wars brick films. It reads, quote, Smaller scale videos present animated lightsaber battles between a few of the key characters and often display severed heads, limbs, and bodies cut in half in their finales. 
Sometimes red Play-Doh has been applied generously to simulate splatters of blood or intestines. The book then goes on to cite a thread on the Bricks Emotion forums called the quote, things you don't want to see in a brick film thread, in which one of the top complaints is adult content. One comment wrote, quote, the violence in so many brick films comes across to me as a little kid shouting, lol, killing people is cool, right? Right? Vous êtes des animaux. Brick filming and Lego as a whole is a hobby that's generally meant to be enjoyed by all ages, 4 to 99 to be exact. And generally, most brick filming competitions try to cater to that image at least somewhat. While films with more adult content are both allowed, encouraged, and enjoyed, there's usually some limits on more explicit content, such as excessive violence, overt sexual content, and blatant drug references. Fortunately, it's incredibly rare for this rule to actually be enforced, since few brick filmers have ever really tried to cross the line that far. However, Vous êtes des animaux, apologies for my terrible French, was an entry into the 2016 Brawl Contest, and it is among those few, and it is certainly the dooziest. Oh boy. The film presents the viewer with a succession of short vignettes illustrating a cannibal sadist holding up a tied and gagged victim hostage. After an extended gruesome sequence of blood, torture, and cannibalism, the film ends with one of the multiple victims sitting alone in the cage, face obscured by the iron bars, shooting himself in the head, and flopping dead to the ground. Despite most of the gore being obscured, it's a pretty upsetting watch. While there definitely exists dark, gory, twisted horror brick films, what makes this one particularly disturbing is how competent the technical and storytelling aspects are. The film was submitted to the contest as an unlisted video, and after being disqualified, the entry was never made officially public. At an undetermined time years later, the film was delisted from YouTube, and all of the other films by its creator, only known as Tutor, were made unlisted or entirely private. As such, it's hard to get a handle on the actual size of his filmography, Vous êtes des animaux was preserved before its removal from YouTube and can be located if you do a bit of digging in the right places, though it's not exactly recommended. Brick Unit was a brick filmer and voice actor most associated with the early YouTube Star Wars brick film scene, but he had previously been known in brick filming as one of the most infamous trolls on the brickfilms.com forums and chat room under the username Manic4000. After becoming a regularly active brick filmer on YouTube, it was apparent that old habits die hard, as Brick Unit could still be found trolling people in YouTube comments and channel comments, with a favorite target being Force Fire 101 fans. One day in 2009, word began to spread on Skype that Brick Unit had died by drowning, which had some people very upset. This, of course, turned out to be a total hoax, presumably orchestrated by Brick Unit himself, simply out of boredom. But if you trawl through YouTube today, you can still find some old uploads of heartfelt MS Paint tributes memorializing Brick Unit that may or may not have been in on the hoax. A really good friend Brick Unit has passed away yesterday. This is possibly the only example of a brick filmer faking their death with it actually being believed for a period of time. Early YouTube was essentially the Wild West. There were basically no rules or moderation, gamer words flying from left and right, and while occasionally a hilarious spectacle is better left in the past. You will never find a more wretched hive of scum and villainy. In the LEGO community, one of the most infamous and bizarre incidents was a war between two YouTube brickformers slash builders, Pizza Movies and LEGO Boy 12345678. You might recognize Pizza Movies from his LEGO Clone Wars 501st Legion series, which has amassed over 40 million views over five entries. LEGO Boy 12345678 was a LEGO YouTuber who, for a young age, had an impressively large collection and would host building contests typically centered around Star Wars bases. You might not recognize his username, but you might recognize who he grew up to be, and that's Solid Brick Studios. He is still actively making LEGO builds to this day and sits at nearly 500,000 subscribers. But this story takes place in 2009 and 2010, when communities on YouTube were fledgling and were based around whatever figurehead YouTuber they liked. The target of criticism was towards LEGO Boy 12345678. On a personal level, many didn't like him because he came from means and had a very large LEGO collection, a good amount supposedly bought by his parents for him. He frequently showed off his collection, and particularly his massive clone army. So there occasionally is an undercurrent of jealousy in both the criticism and the choice of him as the target of criticism. And while the criticism came from several different sources, Pizza Movies led the charge and fanned the flames, often using his own platform to elevate accusations from others. Now these events happened 10 plus years ago, so some of the timeline is fuzzy as it's dealing with deleted posts and missing context, so apologies if things are a bit out of order. LEGO Boy was being accused of quote, riding the wave of several trends of Mayan creations, abbreviated to MOX, 
particularly on the image sharing site Flickr. One critic posted a picture saying, quote, First Star Wars, and now going on Halo, possibly World War II. When will the madness end? One comment recounts how supposedly at a convention, Lego Boy admits that he started making World War II mocks because everyone else was doing it. The accusations went from riding the wave to actual stealing, with pizza movies accusing Lego Boy of plagiarizing part of a now-deleted brick film called Lego Star Wars Guns of Debrillion. Additionally, one builder on Flickr claimed that Lego Boy essentially ripped off a Halo mock of theirs and was selling the model online. Beyond hurling accusations and gamer words at each other, the feud became tangible when Lego Boy allegedly started buying basic Lego bricks like 2x4s in bulk from the website Bricklink. He supposedly bought so many that there became a shortage, leading to a backlash from pizza movies and others. While the criticism was understandable, it's the internet, so of course it wasn't handled with much class. For example, pizza movies saying, quote, I have his address. Anyone wanna uh, help? And a comment that reads, quote, David, all you do is cry for the things you want, and if you don't get them, you throw a tantrum. You get everything you frickin' want in your real Gamer word. life. So in a couple of years, you will have no friends, I doubt you have any now, be gay, sorry, forgot you already were, and live in a frickin' cardboard box filled with your own crap. So I highly advise you shut your f***ing mouth and ruining our lives. On YouTube, things were just as juvenile, with brick films such as the One Way to Get Rid of Lego Boy 1234568 series, in which two entries were made. The first being Lego Boy being murdered by assassins, and the second being decapitated by a group of Tusken Raiders. Their war lasted for nearly two years with no real resolution as most conflicts on YouTube did. Now that they're no longer children, I would think everyone involved would probably just look back at all of this and have a laugh about it. It's a good thing all that silly, frivolous YouTube drama went away and is definitely a thing of the past. Oh. And that is the Lego Animation Iceberg Explained. Thank you so much for watching. We'd like to give a huge shout out to Wait, what's, what's that? There's something that's, it's even deeper. Oh no, 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 no! <sighs> For those who have been fortunate enough to not be cursed with this knowledge, Chris Chan is an internet figure with an infamous online history going back nearly two decades. Chris is arguably the most documented person in internet history and whose life has been twisted and shaped by anonymous trolls online, fueled by Chris's tendency to always feed the trolls with video responses. Chris is the author of a comic series called Sonichu, an electric hedgehog that's an amalgamation of Sonic and Pikachu. The Sonichu series catalogs the adventures of Sonichu and his friends, and very often parallels the real-world turmoil of Chris's extensive online battle with trolls and love quest to find a, quote, boyfriend-free girl. This became even more evident with the even more obvious self-insert character, Chris Chan Sonichu. I'm not even going to dip my toes into Chris's battle with trolls that has lasted through three separate decades now. For reference, there is a currently 60-part, 40-something hour documentary series that objectively documents the life of Chris Chan. Be warned, it's not for the faint of heart and is often very disturbing and upsetting. Chris is also a big fan of Lego and has occasionally shown off some huge creations, including a Lego version of part of the fictional town that Sonichu lives in called Quickville, with CWC standing for the initials of Chris's birth name, Christian Wesson Chandler. Well, wait, hold on, actually no. Chris's birth name was Christopher Wesson Chandler because there was this bear that gave Chris the name that, at this mall. Call me the real name that I've got that's been given to me. Center. You know what, never mind, it's a long story. While extremely infrequent, Chris has actually made a few outsider brick films. The earliest of these animations is a video from the late 90s called Mario Kart 64 Lego Raceway, in which Chris stages a race between Chandler family members, real life acquaintances, and various fictional characters. The film was shot in black and white using a Game Boy camera plus its rudimentary built-in animation feature. And with a low frame rate, it comes dangerously close to being more of a slideshow but still just about counts as stop motion animation. This runs for 13 minutes, and yes, the same brief music track loops throughout its entirety. Chris has also been seen at LEGO conventions, including the first two BrickFest conventions in 2000 and 2001, which took place in Chris's home state of Virginia. At BrickFest 2001, Chris even attended a panel about brick filming presented by BrickFilms.com founder Jason Rolt and original Bricks in Motion founder Thomas Foote. In 2001, Chris did start work on another Game Boy camera brick film called The City of Quickville Tour, but didn't really continue with brick filming after this. Many years later, after becoming a notable internet figure and frequent video maker, Chris did film a couple of live-action videos acting out scenarios using Lego figures, using custom Sonichu figures, 
but even by the loosest definition, these could hardly count as brick films. After about another decade, Chris created the 16 minute video, A Moment with Dr. Wolf, Chris Chan, and Greater Struggles. The description of this video states, quote, fame and followers do not always accumulate to good things, which is a surprisingly accurate summation of the entire saga of Chris Chan. The video essentially plays out as a therapy session between a doctor and a figure representing Chris, in which Chris rambles about the real life difficulties that have mostly all arisen from being trolled by the world's most obsessive absortment of anti-fans for the better part of the previous 15 years. Although this video is even more of a slideshow than the gay boy camera brick films, it does at least feature the figures moving from pose to pose without being visibly manipulated by hands of the frame. This may be the absolute lowest bar possible, but if you are willing to count this as being a brick film, then it would actually make Chris Chan one of the very few people with a span of brick filming activity reaching over 20 years. Chris's history may have only been tangentially related to Lego and brick filming, but who knows how dramatically brick filming history would have been altered if Chris had continued with the hobby and become an active member of the online community 20 years ago. Due to the eventful turns that Chris's life has taken since, it seems very unlikely that Chris Chan will ever make a brick film or much of anything else ever again. And I promise we have now reached the end of the Lego animation iceberg. Thank you so much for making it to the end. Thank you to everyone who narrated the tears and shout out to Sanjir and Penta for helping to crank out this absolute behemoth of a script. It was so much fun to research and to write and to voice and to edit. If you're a Brick Filmer and you're looking for a community to plug into, as the video previously mentioned, we are Bricks in Motion. We have our website, bricksinmotion.com. We have a very active Discord community, link in the description. And of course we have our YouTube channel where we do Brick Films of the Month. We have set reviews, we have a monthly podcast, and we have a tutorial series that we just started hosted by Nathan Wells, the guy who made Beast. So subscribe for more, click the bell and all that fun stuff. You can check out our social media. And yeah, thank you so much for watching and I hope you stick around for more.